Hello! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can cut strips in order to complete your quilt top. Now, these strips are going to complement the quilt blocks created in the Jack Dempsey 18 inch quilt block. You can see it's going to be this section here that goes in between each block. So, I'm going to show you how to figure out how many strips you need and then also what size and the layout. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we start cutting out our quilt strips, there's one thing we need to do with our fabric, and that is prep it. Any fabric that you have going into your quilt, besides your quilt block, so everything else, your stripping fabric, your backing fabric, your binding fabric, go ahead and wash those. We need to make sure that we're not going to have any color bleeding that's going to come out after our quilt is together. So you go ahead and wash it all ahead of time. And that also take care of the pre-shrinking process as well. Again, this is all other fabric for your quilt except for your quilt blocks. We're not going to wash the quilt blocks until the very end of the process. To help me figure out the number and size of each of the strips that I need to create, I'm going to be using this diagram that's available on the website. In my particular demonstration, I'm going to be focusing on the twin, but the process is going to be the same regardless of the size. Let's quickly go over our diagram so we can understand how it relates to our strips. This chart up here, you'll see we have numbers and we have letters. The numbers represent the individual embroidered quilt blocks. So if I was to create a twin, I would need 15 total completed quilt blocks in order to make up the twin size. The letters, on the other hand, represent the individual strips. So we have A, B, C, and D. Everything with the same letter, so this A and this A, tells you it's the exact same size strip. You'll notice A is smaller than, say, C. This chart down here, all the letters correspond to the same letters up here. And what this is giving you is the layout you need to take on your stripping material. So when I'm cutting out my strips or drawing them on my fabric, I'm going to do this exact same layout. And you'll notice if you count all the A's, it should be the exact same number of A's that we have up here. So this is telling us how many we need to cut out of each different size. Down here at the bottom, we have direction of grain. So this is telling you how you need to lay it out on your fabric. Now, grain line is always parallel to the salvage. So if we were to pretend that this is my fabric, if the salvage is running along the top, then you can go ahead and do this exact same layout, which I'll show you shortly. Now that we know the number of strips, the next thing we need to figure out is how big each individual strip needs to be. That's what's really nice about this chart is they've done all the work for us. We have our letters again down here, and again, this is corresponding to our chart up here. Everything is consistent. So if I need to know how big do I need to make each A strip, they're telling you the size, 3 and 3 quarters by 18 inches. So if I was to look at an A box, 3 and 3 quarters would be going this way, and the 18 inches will be going this way. Here we have B, 3 and 3 quarters by 39 and 3 quarters of an inch. Also, they're giving us the seam allowance, which is included in that. So each strip has a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And they're telling us that if we do the same layout that they recommend up here, we need two yards of 45 inch width fabric. Here you can see part of my layout on the actual stripping material. Now this layout is the exact same as the diagram we were just looking at. Here is my salvage. Now this is a single layer of fabric. It's not folded at all. I created a line that was parallel to my salvage and kind of use this as my foundation to create the separate sections. I recommend using fabric marker, fabric pencil, or chalk in order to create your lines so we can eventually get rid of them after we complete our quilt. Now I also recommend that you actually put your letters inside each section. This will help keep you organized, especially when it comes to the assembly of your quilt. I actually did mine in the fabric marker. I went ahead and did in paper, so it would be a little bit easier for you to see. Once you have everything lined up and you have all your lines created, you can then go into the process of cutting it. You're going to cut directly on your line, separating the individual strips. Now you can use scissors if you wish. I think it's a little faster to use a rotary cutter, so I'm going to use that. Make sure that you do cut it on a rotary mat because we don't want to have any damage from cutting. So I'm just going to line up my ruler with one of my lines here. And then I'm going to go ahead, grab my rotary cutter, and I'm going to cut directly on it.
Here are a couple examples of my A strips cut out. Now as an option, after you finish cutting out all your strips, you can go ahead and mark your seam allowance line and you can see I went ahead and did it to this top one. So this line is marking my 3 eighths of an inch, which is, happens to be my seam allowance. But once you have everything cut out and marked, you can go ahead and move on to your quilt top assembly. Please make sure to check out other tutorials on quilt assembly from Jack Dempsey Needle Art.